Hi Aries, Rosemary from Rosemary Astrology and welcome to your March 2023 Astrology. So again, we have quite a pile up in uh, two signs, you know, plus Taurus, of course, the Sun and Mercury will be shifting into your sign later in the month. For all of us, this means we have all the planets sitting in four signs and I was looking a little bit ahead at the astrology and this is going to continue until May when the sun arrives in Gemini and of course Jupiter is going to shift into Gemini after one year in Taurus to stay for one year in the sign of Gemini. I'm getting ahead of myself but do know you know all the energy is between the last two signs of the chart the most open to the collective and the first two signs so the two signs that are the most self-focused, of course, your sign Aries, you know, who I am, very much concerned with self-identity, self-initiating, you know, who I am, where am I going, what am I doing, and Taurus, you know, my stuff, right, what do I have, what are my resources, what is my wealth, so just very interesting, by this fall, everything will be much more spread out, always tend to like when the energy is a little more spread out than when it's all bunched together we get a lot of intensity but it is what it is so before i do continue please do consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so and again a big thank you to all those of you who do i really really do appreciate it love talking astrology with all of you so you have had the sun aries in your 12th house since last month arrived on the 18th of february mercury arrived on the 23rd this is like your new year's eve very much what is going on with you what is going on with your inner self the sun is just adding focus to this mercury has your thoughts turned towards this so maybe you're really evaluating what you want to see for the next year you know, really exploring uh, inner patterns, what is working, what isn't working. The sun is like a great big spotlight and the 12th house tends to be very private. It is usually what we won't share with others, you know, um, our secret thoughts. It's also what, uh, as I said, subconscious patterns, it's what we know intuitively. So that's why it's great to use this energy to really tap into what is going on inside of us. It's also all those practices to do so. So, you know, maybe meditating or, you know, listening to guided meditations, uh, you know, maybe things just like candle gazing or just, you know, journaling, just letting your thoughts, you know, flow onto the page, so to speak. Really great time to do that. And then, of course, uh, be ready to go, <laughs> definitely ready to go when the sun and Mercury shift into your sign, as I said, towards the end of the month. There's a new moon there as well on the 10th at 20 degrees of Pisces, you know, again, in that very dreamy um, sign of Pisces. The moon also relates to feelings as the ruler of fellow water sign uh, Cancer and, you know, also relates to intuition. So this is really the time, you know, to just really use that energy to visualize, you know, to imagine. Um, there's an idea also with Pisces of collective good, especially if you're manifesting, focus on what you want, but focus also on how that's going to create a good around you and benefit those around you. Remember, a new moon is a good time to initiate something as well. So it can be, you know, we say something smaller going from a new moon to full moon or, you know, perhaps something even more intense when we have a full moon in Pisces this fall. Uh, full moon, Yes, full moon will be in Pisces this fall. So, you know, again, like, just a bit bigger cycle if you want to, you know, put something in place for the next six months. Remember, the new moon is the start. The full moon is the culmination. So you can give yourself, you know, a, a two-week cycle or a six-month cycle, depending on what you're looking at. But definitely, you know, this uh, energy here is very much, you know, emotional healing, um, higher vibrations, uh, looking inside self for answers. Then, of course, by the, and I'm going to look at my notes because, again, I have a lot of dates. By the 10th, Mercury is going to move into your sign a little bit ahead of the sun. Mercury never far ahead or behind the sun. So your thoughts, your ideas are going to be more focused on a self, what you want to do perhaps for this coming year. The sun will join Mercury 
in a few days, but I'm going to try to do this in order. Always try to do this in order. The 11th, the day following the new moon and Mercury's departure to your sign, Venus arrives in Pisces. Venus is exalted in Pisces. She is like the honored guest. She is put on a pedestal. So this is very, very much the time of um, intense, you know, artistic sensitivity, romantic sensitivity. We could almost be seeing things, you know, in a very dreamy way. Uh, Venus can be very uh, sensitive and romantic in Pisces. She can, you know, truly express all her qualities and be on her best behavior. The difference between being in your home sign and being in an exalted sign, Venus is just at her very, very best there. Only caveat from the 19th to the 24th, she will conjunct Saturn. That can leave us feeling very emotionally isolated and lonely. You know, there's a sternness about Saturn. Saturn is boundaries, uh, looking at details, very practical. So we might be having a very uh, cold, harsh, practical look at money. Venus does relate to money. Not always a bad thing, but also relationships and you know, I was saying in the Pisces video, it's all going to continue on this. So, you know, this could be too harsh. Maybe we don't want to make decisions while we have that energy going on again from the 19th to the 24th. It's about five days. You know, I, it's not a switch. I always say builds a little bit ahead, dies down afterwards. If, you know, you are in a relationship, you might be looking at, you know, the nitty gritty, maybe too much, maybe, you know, uh, scratching away too much of the details. If this is a new relationship, Venus does relate to romance, you know, maybe looking at that a little too sternly as well. On the other hand, you know, it could be a nice counterbalance to be to Venus who can be, you know, sometimes overly romantic or overly accommodating, but definitely, you know, um, a feeling of being stifled and feeling cold because Venus is cut off by Saturn's, you know, desire for boundaries. Do know that a romance begun with Venus conjunct Saturn has a very practical uh, eye on things. How is this good for me? You know, how does this relate to status? How does this relate to, you know, what is going on materially? And as I said, money-wise, this can really, really get you on track as well. So it's not always a bad thing. At the same time, you know, it can hinder relationships by being too, you know, cold and harsh or boundarying Venus's desire to create bonds. And of course, Mars arrives there on the 22nd somewhat, and I am going to move, move the moon because this isn't all going to fit in. But Mars arrives there on the 22nd. I will talk about the sun in a second. Of course, the sun will have been gone by the 19th, but we'll get back to that. Mercury arrives in the middle of this on the 22nd and Mercury, uh, Mercury, sorry, Mars is really going to push you to take action. Mars is the action planet. I would hold off a little bit, see, you know, what sticks coming out of this energy, what was perhaps just, you know, too much of that sternness of Saturn before going ahead with anything. Then, of course, as I said, on the 19th, the sun arrives in your sign. So it is the start of your birthday month. You are feeling very energized. You know, it's go time. I literally wrote in my notes, it's go time. So after all this reflecting, um, you know, dreaminess of Pisces, you're going to want to take action about things. You might want to put a plan in motion as well for the coming year. Really that energy of defining who we are, defining where we're going, uh, you know, what do we want to project outwards? The first house is our appearance. It is how others see us, both in person and online. So definitely, you know, the energy is there. You're thinking about that. Maybe you're communicating more as well and really um, putting things into into motion very much within, you know, how you want to show up and how you want to be. Change always starts with self, right? So it's going to be starting with how you are showing up. Mars, of course, is going to hold back. I just want to talk about Mars for a second because the distance between Mars and the sun is going to uh, increase over the coming months. Mars um, does want to take action, has to slow a little bit in Pisces because Pisces is uh, quite dreamy, quite related to emotions, also very much about the collective, right? Boundaries dissolve in Pisces. So, you know, Mars will have you looking inwards as well, but Mars likes to take action a lot, right? So I always say Mars is going to be, um, you know, stomping around in those uh, corners, those dark corners or recesses of the subconscious, you know, really kicking up our 
subconscious dust, so to speak, and wants to do something, wants to do something, but Mars has to slow and we have to reflect. Um, there's something, you know, whenever we do inner work or intuitive work or, you know, that otherworldly work, we can't, it's not linear, you know, it's not taking on something, finding a solution, applying the solution, adjusting, going, you know, reaching the target. There has to be a time of reflection, you know, so maybe if a pattern does come up, if there's something you're noticing about the way you approach things, you know, that that template or pattern you put on everything, you know, your your outlook or your your inner self that influences what is going on outside around of you, we have to take the time to reflect on that. And Mars tends to want to go very, very fast. So, you know, that's another thing to know, Aries, when we have a lot of energy going on in our inner 12th house. Very secretive idea with the 12th house. What goes on here, we tend not to share with others, but do, I always say, remember, it is above the horizon. So others can notice perhaps something going on with us, even if we don't really want to talk about it or let on. Remember, Jupiter continues um, his sextile to Saturn. That is something that was going on in January, February, and continues the first weeks of March. Actually, the first three weeks. So keep using this. This is the practical side of Saturn, the attention to detail with opportunities and solutions. So maybe opportunities in terms of your wealth, in terms of your resources, uh, solutions coming along. Sometimes Jupiter is just plain luck. You know, this can be just windfalls and things happening uh, that are going to help you increase your wealth and income. Remember, Saturn expands everything and Sat uh, Saturn Jupiter expands everything. Saturn is the attention to detail and the reality check in order to make things happen. But S Jupiter is, I keep wanting to say Saturn, Jupiter is really picking up speed was about between zero and five degrees in 2023, but now by May is going to travel all the rest of Taurus and be in uh, Gemini by May. That's going to be another big shift this year and is going to conjunct Uranus in April. I will be talking about that in the April astrology and we'll probably do a separate video on that. Jupiter Uranus conjunctions happen once every 14 years. So it's going to be important to know what that energy is about and how, of course, to use it wisely. Then, of course, at the end of the month, we have a full moon lunar eclipse in Libra. That's on the 25th at 3.13 a.m. East Coast time, five degrees of Libra. Actually, we're going to be able to see it in all of North America and almost all of South America, except perhaps the east portion. I was sort of looking the eastern uh, part of Brazil, but we are going to be able to see that, barring that it's not cloudy. It always seems to be cloudy on the eclipse and we can't see it. This is going to be taking place in your seventh house of partnerships, uh, business partner, marriage partner. It is also um, rivals and the competition is just those significant others that sit across from us and um, do, you know, in a way shape who we are. And of course, you know, who we are, we bring that to our partnerships. Remember usual eclipse warnings, something is hidden something is happening in shadow, you don't have the full picture. Libra is about justice and balance and fairness as well. You know, that idea of consequences to actions. And there is something, of course, as I said, that is going on that you're not seeing. Now, I always give full moon warnings saying, you know, give yourself three or four days before and after not to get caught up in the energy. But with an eclipse taken from the 21st to the 29th, that eclipse week, the energy is very, very intense. Even the week before the 14th to the 21st, it will begin to build and it will die down from the 29th of March to the 4th of April, it will begin to decrease. But remember, it's going to be increasing again because there will be a solar eclipse on April 8th. Just do keep that in mind. So this could be something that has been covered up in Libra. It could be an injustice that is covered up in order to keep the balance. But nothing is as it seems. And I always say don't get uh, coerced into choosing sides or making a decision or don't go ahead yourself and make a decision because you're not seeing the whole picture and something might be going on and you think, well, this is obviously what's happening. Usually there's a front story and the real story is going on in the background. You can think back six months to the previous eclipse, but that in October was in a Taurus. We were finishing up. That was the last eclipse on the Taurus Scorpio axis. 
The next one, of course, is going to be an Aries. So maybe, you know, we will see what's going on then. Also an idea of looking back one month to see what was going on and waiting ahead one month to see what comes up. But, you know, I'm getting the feeling of, you know, maybe that front story of, you know, everything's okay, everything's fine, you know, everything has worked out, it's balanced, it's even, you know, again, relating to Libra. But there's actually something uh, going on in the background that's not okay and that is going to come out eventually. So, as I said, don't choose, choose size, especially with Libra, you know, choosing sides, uh, whose side are you on, you know, again, that idea of scales, just, you know, try to avoid making decisions during that whole time. You know, again, eclipses are powerful change agents. You will often hear they mark uh, an ending or a beginning or usually an ending and by the same token, a beginning or a beginning and by the same token, the ending of something else. And, you know, it's one of those things that's hard to say what is being eclipsed because it is being eclipsed. But just do know that I always find it's, you know, really dicey energy and eclipses are always, you know, a time I just really avoid uh, making decisions or, you know, as I said, choosing sides or, you know, choosing, you know, one perspective as opposed to another, because again, you know, we don't know what's going on. And remember, if you do have factors between three and seven degrees of your chart, you will feel this more intensely because uh, this eclipse will be aspecting those factors. Of course, I can't see everybody's chart, but do know if you are early born of any sign, the sun will probably be roughly at those degrees of your chart. So do keep that in mind. So lovely Aries, that is everything I wanted to tell you for the month of March. Have a wonderful, wonderful month. Don't forget to drop me a like if you liked, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Drop me a comment and tell me if this resonates with you. Take care and I will see you in the next one.